All right. Every time I have to set up, it says, rotate your screen, please. And I'm like, I am. But here we are. Let's get this nice and level. I am currently sweating in an 80, 81 degree apartment right now, thanks to a malfunctioning AC unit. So we're gonna make this quick. Chicken pot pie is on the recipe tonight and hopefully everything goes smoothly because I did not think about how much time and effort had to go into this. That being said, I did do a prep run um, like an hour or so ago, no, two hours ago. Before we get into all that, hello everybody. Welcome to the stream with your host, time and time again, hey everybody. Um, if I seem a little off put, it's probably because of the heat, but we'll make do with it. You guys are sitting at home, hopefully, watching on whatever it is that you're watching on, mobile, computer, whatever, in a nice, cool, comfy environment. Um, chicken pot pie, oh yes. So, we, I started a batch two hours ago. Hey Patty. How you doing? I was just going over a few things. Um, I'm currently sweating in my 80 degree apartment. AC's not working. What are you gonna do? Submit a work request. I did. That's it. <laughs> Hopefully they come here today, but it's not really an emergency, so I'm expecting tomorrow. Um, Tonight's recipe is chicken pot pie, which I've said probably like three times already. But uh, as I was saying, I started a batch two hours ago, so 3 p.m., because I didn't anticipate how much time went into this. I was looking at recipes for it, and I was like, okay, so you're just going to mix this, uh, mix that, pour this in, combine, stir, yada, yada. And then it said sit for an hour, and I'm like, what? So, I do have a my foot in the door when it comes to the recipe. We'll get to that later. Um, but right now, I'm going to start everything else from the beginning. And when we get to that point, I'll just do the old switcheroo, and we can get uh, um, we can get right on moving instead of waiting an hour. It was something to do with letting the uh, the mixture or the filling rest. We don't have time for that. Uh, hopefully your evening, well afternoon and morning, hopefully your Sunday was going okay. Because smile is pretty chill. The AC only stopped working probably about an hour or so ago. Maybe longer and I just didn't notice. But man is it hot now. And I don't know how to get this working. Just, there we go. My trusty apron, courtesy of some coworkers. Let's go get some ingredients, shall we? Chicken pot pie is the name of the game today. And I've got pretty much everything already. I didn't have to go shopping today, which was nice, because I'd rather not have to go out right now. So, we're gonna need a bunch of things here, most of which I already anticipated. Again, since I started a batch two hours ago, I kind of have an idea now of what we want to make. Two carrots. Let's tone it back and do one medium carrot. Like a so. Frosty's not gonna miss this. It's summer anyways, he's like, gone. Okay. He's grabbing all the ingredients right now and we'll go over it as we go along. Nope, not that. Okay. There we go. 
hopefully you're all centered. Again, um, this recipe isn't actually as hard as I thought, but it was the prep that uh, kind of blindsided me because nowhere in the other recipes did it say, oh, you have to let it sit. And I wasn't about to just go against it. I figured the reasoning behind it was pretty sound. So I was like, well, better get to making a pre-made recipe so that when the time comes for the stream, we'll be ready. Our ingredients are chicken. I have some here. This is just one chicken thigh, salt and pepper. Um, the measurements, I kind of just adjusted from the recipes that I saw online. I gotta retie this. Um, because I wanted to just make the batch small enough for the pan that I have and the puff pastry I had, which fits the pan. The puff pastry is gonna be the crust on top of the pot pie and the pot pie will be going in this. Actually, let's start with preheating the stove because I do have to cook that chicken. So I'm gonna get that on the heat. Um, we'll just go back and forth between these. We have approximately, let's measure this out. This is homemade chicken broth. I made this on Friday because I want it to be prepared. It tastes so much better than any sort of pre-made chicken broth you make. We got about one and a half cups here. I'm going to actually, let's bump that up to like two cups. And we'll see. Well, we'll see. Just a little more. Okay, sorry. One and a half cups. Let's just go with that. We've got uh, half a potato here, a quarter of an onion. I don't know how much of all of this we'll use, but we essentially have potato, onion, peas, and carrots. I wash my hands. I'm gonna go wash them again, really quick. These are everything that's gonna go inside. And a chicken pot pie also consists of a, I believe it's called a roux, R-O-U-X. That's all the, basically the, the filler, the cream filling. Cream, I don't think that's the right word, but the, the liquid, thick liquid base filling inside a chicken pot pie. Oh, we also wanna just, Clear out the oven and I'm gonna get it set up for when the time comes. The oven will have two racks going in. Uh, I think. Oops, other way. Yeah. Two racks going in, one on top of the other. My chicken pot pie is gonna sit on the top rack and there's gonna be a bottom like sheet rack. Hey, bottom sheet rack to kind of catch any drippings that might fall. So we've got a pan preheating right now. That's for the uh, chicken. That is just sitting in some salt and pepper. Let's go ahead and prepare some other fillings that'll go inside. We've got four tablespoons of butter. Uh, this is gonna be room temp by the time we're ready for it. Just give that a cut and a cut again. This is gonna go into the pan first with the flour to make of the roux. Yank. There we go. And I've got a little sheet here, a little container. Okay, that's done. Let's move that. And I got my trash right here too. Perfect. Pan is still getting warm, so we've got time. Next, what do we want to do next? Let's do, let's do the carrot. Carrot, I'm just going to scrape off a little bit of the outside, kind of like peeling it. Just clean it up a little. Cool. Wipe off the knife. 
run it under. Just get a little rinse for all the excess. Okay. Off goes the head and the tip. Just don't want those. And how I cut a carrot. This is what I've been doing for like uh, diced carrots. Is kind of cut it into portions that are of similar diameter. So this top chunk is all kind of a similar diameter. Okay, then the next middle. And then uh, let's do one more. So this is a thin, it tapers as the carrot uh, goes down its length. Then we'll cut them in half lengthwise. That's a half. I like to stand them up on the slices that I just made and then cut down. Sharp knife always helps. And last one here. Cool. And then with each piece, like so, uh, with the bigger ones, I'm going to cut into more vertical slices. So about a, maybe about a third. Since they're still chunky, oops, and then turn them another way. Actually, let's get you guys a little bit closer if we can. That better, maybe. There you go. Like that, right? So now you've got like carrot strands here. And then just take one, you could do both too. And then just cut. Since carrots are kind of uh, firm, dense, tough, it might be a little bit difficult so you can do one stalk at a time or a half stalk at a time. There we go, and those are our diced carrots. We'll move on to the lesser or uh, the smaller in diameter carrot chunks and we'll work our way down. We'll do one here, slice, slice, and like that. And see, that gives you nice even chunks no matter the origin of the carrot piece. Okay. So a little bit faster here. And then when you get to the smaller ones, you don't have to do all three, you can do a slice in half, and it still gets you a similar dimension to the uh, other chunks. Good. Half. And then when you get to the smallest one, like I will in a second, you could do half. Um, if it was really thin, you could just go straight up cutting into slices. I'll just do half anyways. And since they're not thick at all, I can do both at the same time. And there are our carrots. I've got a plate here. Go ahead and just add that. I don't know if we'll use all of this, but this is just one carrot, so what the heck. Next, um, let's do the onion. So an onion, we're going for everything in um, consistent dimensions here. So these are gonna be uh, medium sized diced. So we'll just make our vertical cuts, but don't cut all the way through. good and what I did here is I kept the the tip of the onion here so it doesn't all just fan out this is kind of holding it all together so I made the vertical cuts like so and then turn it 90 degrees and I'm gonna cut against or perpendicular of those um, but sometimes I like to do this uh, board wise cut or like um, flat cuts into the onion Careful of your fingers here. And that also gives some nice dicing too. But that is highly optional. So again, perpendicular of your vertical cuts. So these are gonna be horizontal onion cuts. Nice and big, firm slices. And there we go. Uh, the top of the onion might be a little funny. So you can just kind of chop around and this like core onion here. I'll just chop, toss it for now. I've got another plate going. This is for our onion. 
remove any skin that we see. Don't want that. Okay, so we've got carrots and onions. Uh, pan is preheating right now. And then we should get the stove going in a bit. Or the oven, excuse me. There we go. Carrots, onions, butter. No, butter, carrots, onions. Next, potato. Same deal. Um, I'm going to slice off a bit. Just put that to the side. And now that's a flat, flat surface to cut off of. Um, like that. I could have done it this way. Yeah, I guess I could have done it that way. But oh well. If you wanted to lay your potato like so. We're going for uniform cuts in dimension. So I do these vertical ones from what the potato was shaped like. And then turn it sideways. And then it's still resting on its flat uh, bottom that I cut off earlier. Have I ever made this before? Only two hours ago did I make um, the filling for this chicken pot pie, but that was a to make a pre-made batch that will uh, help later. Otherwise, no, I have not made this at all before. So I'm hoping it turns out okay, and it seems pretty straightforward. I think the worst parts are uh, the roux, or I wouldn't say the worst. The hardest parts are the roux, and what else, what else? Probably just the wait time and making sure the the crust, the puff pastry crust, cooks well. So now that I've got like potato stalks here. Hey Natalie, glad you could make it. Hope you're having a good Sunday as well. Me, I'm currently cooking in an 80 degree apartment. Chopping potatoes. It's, you don't see me sweating right now because it's focused on the board here. There we go. Yeah, but I hope everyone's having a good, uh, <laughs> a good weekend. If you wanna let me know how it's going. Feel free to speak in the chat. You're not cooking, that's totally okay. <laughs> I didn't uh, share the recipe because this is a first time attempt and I just really stream these for, hey, let's see how this turns out. But if everyone's welcome to join along, see how they make it. And if there's any mistakes, I, um, uh, what's it called? If there are any mistakes I make, then everyone else can learn from it. So right now we've got our diced potatoes and another another. Um, plate for all these vegetables. We've got one more ingredient and then we're gonna um, just kind of saute or pan sear the uh, chicken thigh. And this one is no, um, what's it called? No cutting necessary, it's just frozen peas. Plain and simple, everybody should have this. You get a black eye, you know, just pop it on your face. I'm going to eyeball this a similar amount to everything else. There we go. But we're probably not going to use it all. We will see. So these are going to go here. And I'm actually going to get, let me get some uh, oil on the pan. <clears throat> okay. Oil is preheating. Hey Ty, my AC did in fact go out. It went out like this afternoon, like I wanna say 2 p.m. or something. It was fine this morning and the night before and all of a sudden it's 80 degrees and it says it's cooling and that's a lie as I sweat. I had to close my windows so the sun just doesn't make it even hotter and my birds are here too. One of them was like, man, it's, it's so hot. So they, uh, they jumped in their water bowl to take a bath. And she'll do that when, when it's hot, so. I'm not the only one. I submitted a, wor wor a work request, though. Fumbled my words. I got you guys going on here. Um, no, we'll put you here. Yeah. 
80 degrees right now. Even my bird thinks it's hot. But we'll make do. I submitted a service request and hopefully they'll get it done by tomorrow. As for tonight, I don't know how I'm just gonna like lie in my bed. It, uh, it is, it is kind of awful, but yeah, I hope they do fix it soon. Howdy to everyone tuning in just, just now. Um, as you all can probably tell, we're making chicken pot pie. This is the first time I have attempted to make this, but I do have a, like a pre-made batch ready to go. And I don't know what this looks like right now. It's currently chilling. got some tongs here cold cold water in the tub uh, I ca that I can do a ceiling fan there are zero ceiling fans in this apartment the closest I have is a air filter that blows cold air <laughs> but that's not really designed for that anyways we've got our chicken thigh here I'm just gonna cook it all the way through and then let it cool Ooh. Um, and then I will chop it up and we'll make our roux in this thing too. The chicken thigh, by the way, is uh, just salt and pepper and it was sitting for about an hour or two in the bowl covered in the fridge. Uh, I can't imagine, no, actually, Tyler, you're talking about having not having power in Florida for a week. I, um, Back when I lived in Buck Hill, still going to college, we had our power go out and then we had the AC die out on us. And that was like, what, six people in one house, all trying to just cool down in the middle of summer with no AC. So that was pretty bad. Luckily, we did have ceiling fans though. And opening the windows helped a little bit, but otherwise, nah. Nah, Texas, Florida, both, very very hot during their peak summer times although it's only may so who knows all i know is that i'm just gonna walk this way uh you can't yeah that's not that's not happening right there it says cool on whatever Whew. was that also during a hurricane no hurricanes are nothing or at least my experiences with hurricanes in Florida were nothing. But it was just, I don't know, it got so hot. I think we weren't taking care of our AC properly, but that's beside the point. We're just gonna scoot that back to the side. Uh, while the chicken thighs are cooking, we have prepared carrots, peas, potato, half a potato and a quarter of an onion. And we're supposed to get a filling like that that is with the roux, the butter, and flour. Oh, speaking of which, let's put that to the side. That's still cooking. It'll take its time to, I, I just want to make sure it's cooked all the way through. There's one more ingredient I need, which is some flour. That's going to be mixing with the roux. Um, I need the tablespoon. Where did I put it? I got one hand to work with everything here. Oh, it's in the flour, okay. So that is um, four tablespoons of butter and we're gonna go equal parts butter and flour here. So I want four tablespoons of this AP stuff right here. We'll just use one hand and we'll save it in this little bowl for right now. I am keeping an eye on the chicken and the chicken is bueno. In other news, work is, the work from home has been extended. So tomorrow is another day here. Uh, it's been well over a month now. Some people like it. Some people uh, have found ways to cope with being inside all the time. Me, uh, up and down. I really kind of miss everybody. Miss all y'all watching, um, being home. I, I do get to see my parents, which is a nice thing. <laughs> I, but something about working at the same place that I also just game and relax, and it doesn't mix well. 
I don't know. I just, I need a place to work and then a, ow, a place to play. And they can't be the same place. At first I liked it because it was nice. I could just get out of bed and go straight onto the computer, get logged in in five minutes. But now, it's not like I can complain either because even though when I did go to work, my, my work was two minutes away, but I just miss the people. Like I miss having lunch with everybody or seeing everyone in the break room, going on breaks together. But I'm stuck to Google Duo calls and whatnot, which are fine too. I do like those. Don't get me wrong about them. We do some Google Duo calls to uh, exercise or maybe do some crafts. See, the homies, the work homies, which made work bearable. <laughs> and now I can't even have that. It's just not right. I, I'd like a mix, though. So I'm thinking about uh, coming to the office every now and then, which is totally fine, they say. So I might do a few days here, a few days at work, which, again, is like two minutes uh, that way. Just straight. Um, contrary to what you might think, if a crust develops on the outside of the chicken, it's best to let it sit and take its time because on the inside it could very much still be raw. That is a concept that Younger Jay has had a problem if, with for the longest time. These are our ingredients. We're going to look here. Oh, the chicken broth was homemade. Made that Friday. That was, um... A lot of chicken bones that I roasted, and it kind of brings out the flavor of them. And then you toss that in a, in a big pot. I think it was that one. You can't really see it. Um, with some carrots, onions, like some uh, aromatics, salt and pepper, and just fill the pot with water. Let it boil and then simmer for a couple hours, and you got some yourself delicious. And I mean, like, it's really good. When you make, if you decide to make chicken broth by yourself and you get down like a good recipe, it tastes way better than the bouillon or pre-made salty blech, um, chicken broth that you buy in stores. And like the chicken broth that you do buy in stores is great in a pinch. But when you got the time for this, like, you know, save your bones, get some carrots, some onions, some celery, whatnot, the seasonings. If you do it right, like my goodness, it makes a world of difference. And um, I was trying out when I was making this, when I was making the roux and I added the broth, I tasted it, it tasted way better. And the final ingredient is a puff pastry here that I've had uh, defrosted already. Now it's just chilling. I should probably put it back in the fridge actually. Or we'll let it wait. Stay there. Uh, back to the chicken, it's gonna take its sweet time. Let's actually get a plate for it to rest on. Um, I did have a question for y'all. I do plan on doing this weekly. Uh, this is my fifth or sixth time, I think. It's been over a month as well. Um, but I do plan on making a sort of dessert in the next week or two. Like my next uh, planned recipe. And I was wondering if you guys had any suggestions because I need something that takes not a long, a lot, a lot of time. So pizza dough is kind of out of the question, but otherwise I could make brownies. Uh, I do have some bananas that are taking their sweet time getting ripe, uh, but I would make banana bread out of that. I think this guy's done. It's okay if it's not completely done. Sheesh. It's okay if it's not completely, completely done on the very, like very, very inside because as it cooks in the oven at the end, um, it'll cook all the way through. But of course, I, you wanna do your best to cook your chicken all the way through. Um, that will, that will stay on its, be a bread, no, banana bread. But you could add, and what my mom did recently was she made um, banana bread with some rum in, inside, or she makes a little bit of rum, 
and put some cranberries on top and it was really good. Uh, the only problem she came across was uh, the tin she had to cook it in, it kind of leaves the inside still slightly raw compared to the very overcooked outside. Um, let's go ahead. My kitchen's kind of a mess here. I didn't, let's, we'll move that. Beer bread, oh, I didn't know beer bread was a thing. I gotta rest you guys right here for a minute. Yoink. Uh, don't fall, I had you guys fall one time, I didn't like that. Okay, it's kind of crooked, just bear with me. I have to dump a little bit of the, the oil from the pan. Just kind of clear it out. Okay, I did not know beer bread was a thing. Um, our next step here will be to prepare the roux. So let's get you cinnamon rolls. Ooh, yes, Patty, that was a good idea. The one thing I can think of uh, is that is dough related. So you do have to kind of let it rest, but I think there are some cinnamon bread, cinnamon roll recipes that don't require like a waiting period. So we might be able to get away with that. And I've seen the way they make them. They look really good. Also with that being said, if I made those, I would definitely not eat them by myself because those things are heavy. So I'll definitely have time to, or find time to, uh, Disperse those or distribute those breads monkey bread. What's monkey bread? I've heard, now that I've heard the name of though So I'm gonna say you guys right here. I'm gonna get the Butter and flour Is that, is that better? Why is that so bright? Right um, And the chicken is gonna rest and we'll cut it once it's uh, rested a little bit but now we can do, we need our whisk. And we'll start preheating the oven now. We're gonna go 400 degrees. And then get that going. Very good. In goes our butter into the hot pan. It's on a medium-ish heat right now. I don't wanna brown it right away. And since it's a lot of butter, it should reduce the temperature of the pan too. Normally I wouldn't recommend the metal on metal contact, but the whisk shouldn't do too much to the uh, cast iron. You wanna melt the butter all the way through. And then we've got our flour here. I'm gonna add it gently and stir constantly. so that there are no lumps. A little bit more. I think I'm doing this right. Flip around, or... yeah. I have a whiteboard on the side, like in the dining room. And that's just like my notes back when I was cooking it the first time. So we'll see how this one goes. A little bit more flour. Mix, mix, mix. And some more. It gets really frothy. And that, from the videos I've seen, I didn't see that happen, but uh, who knows. The, the feeling that I have did turn out well though, so we should be good. Okay. Almost done with the flour, but it's getting a, just a little bit thicker, very little. And that's what you want to see here. And there's more. And the last of it. Okay, we're actually gonna let that sit for a little and cook. 
You want to keep stirring it um, every now and then just so that the bottom doesn't burn. And I do see a little bit of color, a little bit of browning from the flour. Uh, so I want to keep stirring that too because I don't want too much of that. Okay, we'll lower, we'll lower the heat a little. Okay, then we have our chicken broth ready. I'm just gonna add a little bit more flour. Okay, I can always reduce that if it gets too thick. I can always add more water or um, uh, butter to kind of help with the uh, thinning it out. But once it's too thin, it, it's kind of hard to add back flour. So this is starting to get kind of brown. And we'll go ahead with our broth. A little bit. And see it starts to thicken up. I don't remember it being so brown, so what I'm gonna do is just take it off the heat while I stir this. Ooh. And I wanna add some more cold broth. Again, this is the big uh, filler in the chicken pot pie. I could, uh, thinking back to the dessert idea, I could make brownies. I did make cookies a while back. So. Or I could make some sort of muffin mix, but that's pretty, pretty uh, straightforward. But it is nice to see how they turn out. Keep going in. You wanna add a little bit at a time just so the, the thick butter flour mixture has time to mix in with the super thin uh, chicken broth. Keep stirring that. I'll put it back on the heat now. It's, I don't know what the lighting is. I can't get that right, but uh, I'm just gonna keep going. It is getting thinner, but still uh, thick enough for the filling of a chicken pot pie. Yeah. It's getting pretty thin actually. But when something's hot like this, you do have to realize that it will thicken up as it cools. So we're looking for Hold on, I, I know how to check the consistency. I just want to add a little bit more broth. Very good. I'm gonna get a spoon really quick. And then see how it coats the spoon and then you run your finger. Let's get it. How do I, there you go, like that. How you coat the spoon and it sticks, but when you run your finger through it and it doesn't try to uh, disperse back on where you stroked it or where you uh, wiped the spoon, then you know you've got a good consistency. So this is perfect. I didn't have to use all the broth. I'm gonna let that stir a little bit. And it tasted good too. I didn't have to add any more salt or pepper because I had done that with the broth already. You can if you want. It's always good to um, season to taste as you go along. So that's ready to add the chicken, which we'll cut. So I'm gonna take it off the heat again. And we'll transfer the chicken. Move the flour 
right now. Okay, so we're almost ready. Um, cutting board, chicken goes on. Nice and crispy, so it's got, but it's got plenty of flavor since we pan seared it. And then just go ahead and kind of shred it up. I'd use my hands, but it's probably still pretty hot. You can use chicken breast for this too. I think that's actually the standard, but I only have chicken thigh right now. And I only thawed two of them. This is one, the other one's in the pre-baked or pre-made batch. So, and then once you shred it, I also like to just cut it the other way. You just want small pieces, um, bite sized So it kind of matches the other fillings, the carrots, the potatoes, onions and peas. good so that's all cut up nice and done Ooh, okay so somebody else is making chicken pot pie chicken thighs just taste so much better but sometimes I feel like chicken breast is the way you want to go for that like classic chicken taste but only if you do it right like only if it stays tender and juicy like with the hot chicken from last week when you marinate that in buttermilk perfect uh, these are gonna go into the pot pie right now actually let's oh the oven's ready too i'm looking for my pot holder can't seem to find it but anyways um let's just bring you guys back again again we're gonna add the uh, ingredients inside this now so first chicken Like so. I've got some peas here. I do like my peas, so a good amount of that's going in. Carrots. Uh, let's add like half first to start. Onion, same thing. I don't want to add all of it just yet. Ah. Got a runaway onion piece. And the potatoes. In the batch I prepared this morning, or I'm sorry, like two hours ago, I did kind of uh, saute the, the potatoes a little bit just to soften them up because I don't like having too firm potatoes in my food. So after I cooked the chicken thigh, I used the same pan to um, uh, what's it called? Uh, soften the potatoes, that's right. So chicken, potatoes, then put it aside, make the roux, and then edit everything back in. This time it's raw potatoes diced up, and then you would mix it. And so this is the part that I thought you'd be okay with to just put the filling on top and um, pop it in the oven, but apparently, uh, you want to cool it and maybe that's the case i don't know but we're going to try the cooled method here because i've got some pre-made already and this stuff is going to stay in a bowl to cool by itself so you can turn off the stove that aside i need a container for that so i will find one this is kind of hard because i don't really have containers here And we'll just take the time to spoon it up. Ah. In the meantime, the oven is already preheated to 400. The undo to 400, if you will. <clears throat> and we're just about ready to prepare the pot pie that will be going in the oven. This stuff is going to be saved for another time. That's all I can think of for right now, so let me get this on a move. 
we do have to prepare the uh, puff pastry crust a little bit um, just to get it on this pan. Oh, and I do, do need to get an egg for some egg wash. <clears throat> After that, then we should be good to go. Should be good actually to just... Uh, Grab it. There we go. Get the spatula. I'm making a mess. Perfect. Okay. So this uh, filling that we just prepared is going to be for later, any other day. I don't know if you can freeze it. I think you can feel like you can uh, and I have to go clean this pan actually so let me do that as well it's probably really hot too Now, one reason I did want to use the pan um, over, say, another uh, saucepan that was look much bigger is because I wanted to get a gauge of how much I needed to make that would fit in this. So I thought it was just best to uh, stick with the ingredient portions that I had and then see how much would fit in this pan because this is the only pan that fits my puff pastry sheet that we will be using and that's what I'm hoping for. So, nice warm pan here. Okay, um, these are all for later. I'll find something to do with them. One, two, three. I'll put them to the side somewhere, please. Okay, fine. Pan, chilled filling, really chilled. Sheesh. I'm looking all over the place. A little disorganized here. Um, oh, actually before we do that, let's get the egg wash going. We're just gonna get an egg and some water and whisk those together. And we're going to use that to brush the pan a little for the uh, crust. <clears throat> so, one egg. I only, only got two, so... Crack it in. Get a fork to whisk. Oh, and some water. Just have water. I don't want to use the tap water here because it is hard water. So if it looks weird that I'm pouring from a jug, it's because it's filtered water that I grab. Hard water here is disgusting. Do not drink. Give it a good whisk. So it's nice and thin. I find chunky egg wash to give various consistencies on your uh, puff pastry and other baked goods. Okay. And we'll get a brush. I think. Yeah. Basting brush. Find it at your local HEB. I couldn't find the other brush that I thought I had here in the apartment, so I bought this like two weeks ago. Okay, so this is gonna go on anywhere that the uh, the puff pastry is gonna go. So basically on the edges, as well as um, the rim, and then even the outside edges, which sounds kind of weird, but. Uh, Anywhere that sticks to the puff pastry is where we want this to go. 
and we'll even spread some on the uh, puff pastry itself. Just make sure it's coated thoroughly, but you don't want to go too much either. Okay. Now uh, we've got our filling. I'm just going to go ahead and scoop the pin. Should be able to just go like this because I used the pan as a measurement. Very good. Just about full, which is nice. If it expands a little, that's totally okay. I mean, I hope. Pat it down. I think it's okay to pat it down. There we go. Now we'll put this just to the side for a second. <clears throat> I got so too much stuff here. We're all over the place, Jay. Jeez. Okay. So this is the part. Um, preparing the filling and letting it cool was what I had done earlier this afternoon. Everything I'm doing right now is for the first time. So we've got our filling and we need to prepare the crust. Uh, which I've got right here. A little bit of flour. Okay. I know it does come pre-floured a little, but uh, what the heck. So in this state, it should be fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure there are no holes on the creases. And I'm going to flatten it out just a little more. Or I think we should be good. Because the one thing I did prepare for was it fits pretty perfectly on this. Actually, we'll just go with that, just so it doesn't stick. Give it a nice flattening. I haven't really worked with these puff pastries before. I think I made a pastry one time, like a dessert, but that's about it. I haven't used it for something like this. So we'll go with that. Very delicately, just drape it over but it's nice and even on your pan. Put that together. Okay. You do want to pinch the edges firmly on this, but not too much that you then end up breaking or creating a seam or a hole in it. Uh, I'm probably gonna cut off the excess here. So let's get some scissors. Just trim a little, just so it's kind of more uniform around the uh, the the rim of the pan. Okay, just a rough circle. Go. It's very soft to cut with, so we're good. Pat it down. Okay, and then based on top. Don't want to put too much, make sure it spreads nice. But I do want to cover everything. <clears throat> Again, first time, so we'll see how this turns out. If it explodes in my oven, that's a result that I'm willing to uh, come to terms with. Although cleaning that up will be a mess. Finished pot pie. I I don't have some finished pot pie hiding uh, like in my fridge as well. This is actually the only pot pie I've made. So it should take 20 to 25 minutes. And I was hoping I could just kill some time with y'all because there's no time traveling here. No fancy uh, post production shenanigans I can come up with. This is real time with y'all. I'm now just playing with it. Okay, we're done.
Do we poke holes in this? Sure, right? I'm poking a hole in the middle because why not? Right? Pines do that. I honestly don't know. I've never seen a pot pie do this. You're supposed to like perforate it, right? Okay. Say goodbye to the pot pie because it's now going in a 400 degree oven for approximately 20 to 30 minutes. I'm assuming 25. Sheet pan goes below it to catch any uh, funny business. And ask your local AI to set a timer for yourself. Alexa, set a timer for 25 minutes. 25 minutes, starting now. Sponsored by. Just kidding. Nobody sponsors this show. I've got extra dough here. I don't know what I'm doing with it. It's kind of fun to just work with. It's really soft. I don't, don't play with your food. Unless you're cooking with it, then play all you want. Uh, my kitchen currently looks like a tornado went through it and my AC has not miraculously fixed itself so it's still 80 degrees in here but do I need pie weights what are pie weights I don't have time for that I don't even know what that is <laughs> oops I didn't mean to Oh, did she set a 25 minute timer as well? That's funny. Uh, this is the other uh, pot pie filling that we prepared on stream. This can be covered and refrigerated or frozen for who knows how long. I'm no expert. Um, right now I'm just gonna store some vegetables, which I'll probably cook later. I think I'm gonna make some egg. Nope, I only have one egg. Who knows? I'll find a use for these, hopefully. Probably saute, maybe another chicken thigh. <laughs> It's not voice recognition, it's just if you say her name, she'll know. It could be anybody in the room that will call her attention. You can set her to things like respond to like Echo or computer or Amazon or something, but like who wants to call her that? Now, if you could set her name, that'd be cool too. She's spying on me right now. <laughs> Nah, who wants to call it computer? Um, computer, turn the lights on. It's like, nah, that's not fun. Well, maybe it is. One thing I'm happy for right now is that I don't actually have to wash all these dishes. I'll let the dishwasher do it. Because I'm really not looking forward to handling these. Okay. Hands are clean, dishes will be handled, put everything away, and we'll check back and forth on the pot pie. Thank you to everybody who's watching right now, even if it turns out to be a catastrophic failure because we still learned something. And I'll probably still eat whatever I can salvage because that chicken broth was really good. And then the roux, and then the chicken and the vegetables. I just hope it contains itself, you know? At some points, I think, if the filling doesn't fill up the entire pan, then like, isn't it gonna look all flat? But then I realize it kind of expands and inflates in the oven, so we should be bueno there. <clears throat> 
So yeah, next week I'm looking, or I'm thinking about, let's move. It's pretty warm in the kitchen. I'm thinking about uh, banana bread. I'll look into whatever this monkey bread, monkey business is going on. Um, what else we got? Banana bread, monkey bread. What did it say? Oops. Uh, cinnamon rolls. Oh yeah. Beer bread, whatever that is. I'm just scrolling through the chat right now. Um, 82 degrees. That's a new record. It's quite hot in here. There's the little air filter. And there are the birds. Chilling. Well, more like heating, really. Uh, banana bread is on my list just because I do have those bananas waiting to go. Uh, once they do get ripe, and I mean like really ripe, like blackened ripe, uh, we'll pop them in the fridge or the freezer and then they should hold off for a few more days. Make sure I stay hydrated. You're right. Always stay hydrated. Um, I'll drink some water, don't worry. Hope everyone else is staying hydrated too. Uh, it does seem pretty warm these past couple days. Better let in some natural light, maybe. At least my basil plants are enjoying the, the warmth. Not so much tomato plant, I don't know what's going on with that. Not so much a green thumb. Has anyone else found any sort of hobbies? Um, or just interest to take up while they've been stuck at home for all these weeks. I'm gonna drink some water out of this giant jug. Because even though I did like cooking before, I think just all this extra time at home, <laughs> eating, that's a good one. Well, that's, that's not new. We all love eating. That's a good one though. Baking bread, ooh, with the yeast and everything, or maybe yeastless recipes. That's a good one. So definitely food related so far. Um, but yeah, I did like cooking even prior to this work from home, stay at home, self quarantine stuff. But now that I've got a lot more free time, um, I do find these uh, downtimes, downtime periods to be Helpful, to say the least. I do have some flour on my hand. I'm gonna go say, I'm gonna go ask for the timer, so get your AI devices ready. Alexa, time left. You have 18 minutes left on your 25 minute timer. Painted my kitchen and made my backyard party ready. That party's gonna be in like a month. But invite me. I'll come to that. I'll bring uh, I'll bring cookies or brownies or whatever. <laughs> and then yeah, you did tell me you were painting your kitchen, so that's fun. Oh, it's so hot. What color did you paint it again? Oh, well, I gotta check on the pot pie. I noticed a slight inflation. Oh. Slight inflation, but the color is still very much uncooked. Uh, ooh. Alyssa's thinking about picking up DJing and mixing. Yo, the. Like that? Heck yeah. That looks cool. Definitely interested to see if that comes to uh, fruition. Look forward to watching you cook every Sunday. Thanks. It is fun. I feel like I'm out of breath. No, I am out of breath. I think it's partially due to the heat and then just talking back and forth and then also balancing, multitasking the uh, chicken pot pie. When I made the batch two hours ago, I was not out of breath. Wine red and porcelain skin color. Ooh, I gotta look that up. Or pics, if you were finished. Is it like dry already? I hope so in this heat, you know. Take like what, half an hour? No, I don't know how painting works. Whether it be art or home decor. 
Yeah, cooking. See, I think I said this before, but I'll glance it over again. Cooking is so... I like it a lot just because... Okay, it is dry. I like it a lot just because, uh, one, you reap your rewards. Come on, it's cooking. Who's going to eat it? You are. And you get to prepare it just the way you want it. You like it a little bit more salty, a little bit more sweet. You can go in that direction. It's a learning experience. And then it's combining like the, um, the artsy side of like all these ingredients coming together. Cue Ratatouille, the pretty fun movie to watch. And, but also like the sciencey stuff, like uh, watching, I don't know, your vinegar and baking soda, volcano experiments and all that. Like seeing that stuff come together and then you just get to eat it afterwards. Cookies, whenever you, practically whenever you want. I'm getting kind of, I'm, I'm good with cookies though. Brownies take a lot of work, but I could eat those. Uh, banana bread sounds good. You just gotta wait for the bananas. What else have I made? Oh, I haven't actually made uh, brownies on stream yet. I did the hot chicken. My first stream was also some sort of fried chicken, I think. I do like cooking with chicken a lot, don't I? I should do a fish one. Um, I almost made shrimp tempura, but that's really, really tricky. Especially with like the, uh, you have to have wet batter. It's got to be cold and this and that. But I'm feeling desserts. Like, I always have a sweet tooth. So right now, my guilty pleasures have been... Oh, hold on. Oh. Literally, all I eat if I don't cook is just Pringles. <laughs> Mega stack Pringles. These are gone in like two days, maybe three. And then Pop-Tarts. Like, <laughs> for um, at work, our, we have some meetings in the morning, daily morning meetings. I'll probably wake up, uh, just get out of bed, wash myself a little. An apple, come on. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Aki, what's an apple galette? Gillette? I know Gillette like the razor. Homemade pop tarts, that'll kill me. I've seen those videos. That won't kill me, excuse me. But like, that's a lot of work. I don't know how they make... And come on, it's cookies and cream. I love cookies and cream. That's an apple tart. Oh. Don't speak bad about my Mega Stack Pringles because they're like a subtle saltiness. I don't want no salt and vinegar. I don't want no... Okay, pizza's okay, but like, I, I don't get tired of original. But uh, yeah, basically with those uh, morning meetings, I'll pro I'm probably eating one of these, maybe. I've gone through like four or five boxes throughout this work from home, self-quarantine span. Ponce or adobo? Adobo, maybe. And uh, I could make a lumpia, but that's also a lot of work. I have yet to find an Asian market, um, just like a, a go-to Asian market that's not like closed or, um, it's gotta be close enough, I think. Or maybe the international aisle sections will work. Let's take a slight tour while I'm talking to y'all. Oh, oh, you can't really see it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> the outside crust looks a little funny. I can't keep it open for too long, but look at the, uh, the back right there. You can kind of see uh, it's definitely getting a nice crust, but I'm waiting for the inside portions to, uh, to set. Um, I did watch quite a few videos on YouTube. I generally don't look on... Um, on like just a regular Google search for recipes, mostly because I'm on YouTube 24 seven. Like that's where I just am. Not really so much other social media things, but I am scrolling through YouTube like it's no one's business. But I, I watch YouTube cooking videos just so I can see the result as well. 
rather than like, oh, here's your ingredients and like a 10 page blog post just to get to the ingredients and recipe only to like maybe turn out this way. Can you put crust on the bottom of pot pie? Too much crust. I want to say that might be too much because it might also cook differently than your uh, your top crust. So you might be left with that soggy, uh, ugh, wet crust. It's not, you couldn't even call it crust. You just call it thin dough layer. You know, but no, no, I don't think you could put it at the bottom of the thing. Um, but that kind of reminds me if I made a pie, I do have a pie tin. So we could maybe make a pie. It's kind of shallow though. Let me go get it. Oh. Okay. Is this a satisfactory pie? This is too thin, right? I don't know, what is this for otherwise? You just kind of like, put like a roast in it or something? Is it just shallow enough to hold like juices or something? You put like a, a tiny chicken in it? I don't know what this is for. I thought it was a pie tin, but I, now that I think about it, I think pie tins are way uh, deeper. But, just had a light bulb moment. <clears throat> I love me some cookies and cream. And it's kind of a lot of ingredients, but I could make a cheesecake. Cheesecakes are pretty good. Uh, that means I get to buy some more Oreos, oh, maybe some ice cream. But cheesecake in this thing, I've made it like twice, I think. Two full cheesecakes came from this thing. Otherwise I've made uh, little cheesecake muffin things. Those were, those were hit or miss because it, some, some of them I kind of drowned in like the oil or butter I used for the crust. But the other ones were like, mm. 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 but the full cheesecakes, I think those have tur turned out pretty well too. It's just a matter of, um, well, gosh, it's just a lot of prep really. Uh, the ingredients, a lot of mixing, and then I think the cook time on that is 40 minutes to an hour plus an hour of resting. So if I were to ever stream that, it would probably be something along the lines of, hey, let's mix all these ingredients together and prep it all. All right, see you in like two hours when it's done, which is not as fun. I also made banana bread in this, which was kind of cool. It turned into like a sheet of banana bread um, it cooked evenly rather than like your standard loaf pan um, And if you wanted to you could make another and then make like a banana bread cake out of it, but I don't make cakes I'm no full baker. I kind of want to jump between uh, What's it called? Baking and then regular cooking too. I mean baking like dessert baking cookies brownies banana bread Apple tarts, apple galette, is it galette? <clears throat> Whatever it is, I, uh, I'm interested in seeing what that is. Apple tarts can be tricky. I don't know how the, uh, the, like the gelatin, the filling in that works, if I'm thinking of the right thing, but it'd be something worth looking into. Um, you're ready with your AI devices again. Alexa. Timer left. No. You have six minutes and forty seconds left on your twenty-five minute timer. Six minutes, that's not bad. Although I'm still worried about the inside of that, so we might go for the full thirty minutes. It's the best a man can get. <laughs> oh man. Tomorrow was supposed to be the uh hey, welcome back to work day, but uh that got extended, so here we are. Um, I don't know. We'll 
we'll see. I've got plenty of options, and I've always had a good amount of options as to uh, what we're going to make. But as the time gets closer and then I have to go shopping for the ingredients, we'll see how it goes. I might take a break next week because I've been doing this for a while and I haven't had a Sunday to re completely relax. And with working from home being stressful, you know, it might be best to take at least one weekend break. Um, I might start streaming on other days, but it probably won't be cooking related. Probably just be playing games. And that'll probably be on the weekdays too, maybe after work. Most likely after work, not during, obviously. <clears throat> so I get to do a little bit of both, cooking and playing games, weekdays and weekends. Find a nice schedule for me. Stay hydra hydrated, folks. Ooh. The Jackbox games I've been playing with everyone else, or just playing games with others, is also a nice way to uh, reconnect with people at work or just friends that I can't see normally. So those were always nice. Let's, um, we got about five minutes left here. Let's go check. I see the sheet pan in the uh, oven and it doesn't have a single drip on it. So it looks like we're in business. And the reveal, you can't really see that. <laughs> Whoa, it's definitely getting crispy on the top. Okay, maybe, um, I was getting pretty brown, but, uh, oh, oh, excuse me. Looks can be deceiving when it comes to that. Just like how the inside or the outside of a chicken can be all nice and crispy, but the inside's raw AF. And you don't want that. Oops. Uh, ooh. Clean up a little bit here so we get ready. Unfortunately, I didn't use all the chicken stock. Well, that'll just go right there. Bunch of dishes that need washing. Not my problem right now. Oh, we do have to let the chicken pot pie cool a little, but I'll get some uh, glamour shots for everyone later or um, after it's done and out of the oven. It'll probably deflate a little once it's out and done cooling, but we'll see how it goes. <clears throat> Just some uh, downtime, waiting out the final minutes before uh, uh, it's done cooking. So let's, I'm gonna set you guys here. Hi, everybody. Again, hope you're all having a great Sunday, great weekend. End of the weekend, unfortunately. And I hope we all have a good week coming up. More working from home. Hope everybody stays safe, too. Just because some of the stuff is opening back up doesn't mean it's just over. Unfortunately, that concept does not seem to uh, stick with everyone. which just kind of makes it worse for us. But there's no, no need to complain. We'll take it as is and do our part. Okay, I've just been kind of moving stuff around. I found the pot Holder. It was under the bananas the whole time. Duh. I'll need it. Uh -huh. Keep that here to dry my hands. I think we're just about ready. I've got an internal timer in my head saying one minute, two minutes. Alexa, time left. You have one minute and five seconds left on your 25 minute timer. SMH. Should have gone with my guts. We'll give it one last look. 
Ooh, definitely uniformly brown on top now. Looks very crispy too. Uh, this, I don't know how this works. Well, it's like a two loops. <laughs> I don't know. Don't look at me. I'm not decent. Is it like that? Just kind of loop it through one and then the other and then some other stuff and then boom. Oh, there you go. It's gonna help for another five minutes. For both, back over the front and on the back. <laughs> Tips and tricks, through both. Back over the front and under the back. Okay, yeah, that's... Ooh, lock tight. It's secured. Is the minute over yet or what? Or was it like a minute and ten and she was just not rounding down? I'm ready. Pot pie is ready. Wow. Woo! No, oh, please. My apartment's already hot enough. and hot. You're all ready for this? Um, hello? Dang, it's thick. Well, not really. It's kind of thick. Well, the puff pastry did its job. <laughs> what more can you expect? And it's just drooping over the sides there. Bleh. A little excess. And the oven goes off, and the light goes off too. 6.22, it's been about an hour and 20 minutes. And we have one chicken pot pie on. Do the fork test, I always love doing this. Well, of course it's gonna do that. This was a store-bought puff pastry crust, so of course it's gonna do its job. There's the uh, incisions I made, <laughs> clearly didn't do anything. Breathe. Ooh, that's crispy. Oh, that's pretty deep, too. Either that or uh, I'm trying to look to see where I'm touching the, uh, the filling. I think I'm getting a little bit on the tip there, so. But we'll let it sit. And then, let's say we dig right in. Like, do a little cross-section some Cross-section action, maybe. What's the right tool for the job, huh? No... No, no, no. Yeah, right, yeah. No, a knife? How about a knife? Just keep it simple. Serrated knife, please, right? Serrated knife? That's a bread knife, I don't want that. try this thing or maybe just a fork knife sharpener <laughs> yeah we'll, sh we'll really show the pot pie who's boss with this thing it's not really a sharpener by the way it's just a honer you use it to hone the blade of your knife a sharpener is something I do not possess though oops let's take a look at that Looking good. Uh, don't touch that. Ooh, that was careful. Don't touch the hot handle. <laughs> I, I'm so ready to cut this thing already, but I know I have to let it sit. Let's take a look. All we can, like, see is the outside which obviously is going to turn into this because it's store-bought i had nothing to do with this dough although thank you for being so readily available and cheap what did we say five minutes oh, oh man 
Okay, let's get a plate. Or a saucer, whatever. Move it over a little. Ooh, hot. Please move. There you go. Cooperate. Very good. Saucer. Put the knife honer away. Hush now. <clears throat> um, I, the anticipation is killing me. I just want to make sure I do it right. Let's use a knife. Let's we'll just use a regular knife and then we'll like scoop it out or something. I don't know. Like serrated steak knife. Sure. Let's get a drink. And an appropriate glass. Wink. Why are you waiting? Why am I waiting? Because you gotta let it cool. Cut it. Y'all impatient. Are you all the kind of people who eats cookie dough before it's cooked? Okay, fine. <laughs> Y'all crazy. I don't think I've ever eaten raw cookie dough out of the dough I've made. Ah, touch the crust. Okay, I gotta put you guys... Tuck you in my arm. Hold everything. Transfer. Oh shoot, who put this stuff here? Ugh. Okay. Whew. Cupcakes, you're crazy. Is that even allowed? <laughs> Let's turn you guys around. One more time. I'm gonna grab some stuff and okay, we'll cut. I'll close that window too. I don't know why it's not stable. Does that look good? Gosh darn it. Patience long. Oh, I don't, that tilt is throwing me out. It's tilting me. Coming back. Do not worry. Okay. Um, five minutes, whatever. Do 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 do. Here it goes, right? Uh, let's I don't want to really slice the cast iron, but whatever. Ooh, hot. Duh. And another cut like so. Nice big slice here. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Let's lift the crust off if we can. There you go. Oh my gosh, it's getting everywhere. I don't care. I don't care. Okay, I need to concentrate on this. I just put you at an angle. I didn't cut it all the way. you think was gonna happen it's not gonna scoop out all the way we'll just scoop out the inside I probably should use a spoon you know do the smart thing but when you're hungry which I quite am Mm. 
I mean, alternatively, it should have been something like <laughs> that. <laughs> but whatever, you know. It's all going the same place. Look at that crust. The filling looks pretty good. It's steaming right now. It's now 83 degrees in my apartment, but I don't care. Nothing's gonna stop me from enjoying this. Uh, we're, we're gonna do the usual blow on the food, then put it in your mouth and it's gonna be hot and you're gonna go <laughs> You know, so <clears throat> let's get that on the way. Taste test number one. We'll go for a little bit of crust, hopefully. A little bit of everything, potato, onion, carrot, chicken, peas, filling. Oh, yeah. Not bad. <laughs> Flavor's pretty good. The, um, I said it before, and I'll say it again. That chicken broth made, like, a world of difference. Um, hold on. Let's get some more. It's actually not that hot. No, you can do it. Okay, it's a little hot. <clears throat> the the carrots and the potatoes are still firm, but they like you can bite all the way through no problem. So it's not like mush. But the onions um, already are softer. Peas are always perfect. Frozen peas, I don't care how you cook them, they just turn out perfect. Like they're not hard to cook the way through. Whether they're firm or they're soft, they're delicious. Crust is the crust. You can't go wrong with that either, I think as long as you cook it all the way through, which it definitely is. I think the part that touched the uh, uh, the filling is gonna be a little soft, of course, but it's still like uh, crispy on top and cooked all the way through, of course. Not like that like gummy, doughy uh, crust that you get sometimes, like at the center of something. <clears throat> Chicken's good, nice and tender. Um, it was all stewed together like this anyways. I think, um, no, if you, actually, no, it's not a complaint. Would you recommend Hawaiian or Minute Maid variant? Yeah, yeah nice uh, Minute Maid Cabernet Sauvignon. I have no idea what wine names are, but these are only only glasses I have other than red Solo cups and mugs. And Minute Maid's my favorite. What are you gonna do? You can tell I really like sugar with all these Pop-Tarts and uh, Minute Maid drinks I'm having. But anyways, I think this was a success. It's, is it a lot of work for a pot pie? I think you get a lot back and the cook time itself isn't bad. It's like, what, 30 minutes? And it's mostly prep. Uh, the flour and roux is a little um, unnerving. Uh, so medium input, medium output. You're not getting a lot for a little, but you're not getting a little for a lot, if you know what I mean. The, the chicken thigh does make a difference though in terms of tenderness. Um, so chicken thigh or chicken breast, whichever way. I think just because it's cooking inside this like stew or whatever, I think if you can prep large enough batches, it's worth it. That's true too. You just need enough, uh, you know, pots or like little um, ramekins, like the little bowls that you can also bake in. If you have those, those are perfect for like, you know, um, a two person dinner, you got two ramekins, little pot pies, personal pot pies, that sounds good. That brings me back to like college, buying frozen pot pie dinners. And then the, the dough, oh, actually the doughs on those were on the bottom, the crust would go underneath so I guess you can have um, crust on the bottom of a pot pie, but in this case, I did not do that. I did not have enough puff pastry. I think what something that really sells it is the, um, the cream filling. I wouldn't call it cream, but the filling. If you like your carrots and potatoes firmer, 
still, not like raw, but firm, then you do it this way. Otherwise, I think preparing your potatoes, like roasting them a little or pan frying them a little and your carrots just to soften them up is the way to go because the carrots, and I don't know if this is the case with pot pies, have a little texture to them. But they're not raw, no, they're cooked. Potatoes, even more cooked because carrots stay rough. And these are the potatoes that I did um, pan fry a little. You can probably use biscuit dough for ramekin pot pie. You could, but you'd have to, you know, finagle them because the the biscuit doughs are like that big, and if your ramekin's any bigger, you gotta like I don't know, combine it, like roll it all up, and then recut it. But uh, that could work. I could see biscuit dough be turning into uh, you know makeshift pot pie crust. But this stuff, this uh, like puff pastry brand whatever Hillsbury thing it comes in a pinch or like it's super cheap you get it at your uh, frozen foods aisle right next to the ice cream and frozen pizzas uh, and then it's like two dollars for two sheets but the flavor is really good oh my gosh I keep forgetting when I made the dough or excuse me, when I made the um, the broth on Friday, it was the roasted chicken bones, then in the pot with carrots, onions, uh, seasonings like salt, pepper, a little bit of parsley, um, thyme, I think, uh, a little bit of onion powder, garlic powder, and then the secret ingredients were some green onions, some scallions, the long ones, and then a little bit of ginger on that, and that gives it like this this punch to it. Unreal, so much, so much better than the chicken bouillon cubes or um, boxed carton chicken broth you get at the store. It just adds another dimension. I think I also, and this was just me, I think I threw in a strip of bacon in there, like cooked bacon, because it was all just stewing. And I was making bacon, and I was like, I don't want all this bacon, so I just... But that, don't do that. I wouldn't recommend it. Or maybe you would. That's the beauty of cooking. You can do anything you want. Alright. I'm gonna go finish eating a little more. And by a little more, I mean probably like a third of this. <laughs> no. Self-control. Um... Let's get one last look at the chicken pot pie. It turned out, I think it was a success and this will feed me for a while. Thank you everybody again for watching. I hope you all have a great Sunday. I hope you all have a fantastic week as well. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy. You know, take breaks. Talk to your friends, talk to family, loved ones, everybody. I'll see you all next week or throughout the week. Next week is uh, mm, some dessert related. We'll go with that. But I'll see you all next time. Take care, everybody. Bye.